Sky News understands that alcohol bans will be reintroduced in the Northern Territory. The Darrell Anderson report was handed to the government and will recommend the NT government urgently reinstate and legislate amendments to its Liquor Act to impose alcohol restrictions in Central Australia, including town camps. Joining me live now is the Northern Territory Chief Minister, Natasha Files. Thanks so much for your time. Can you confirm that these alcohol bans will be reinstated? Good morning and good morning to your viewers. We received the report yesterday. We provided that to the Prime Minister as agreed uh, late yesterday and we're in Canberra today uh, to have collaborative discussions with the Prime Minister around the contents of that report. I won't preempt uh, until it is publicly available, which we have committed to, but I look forward to those conversations with the Prime Minister. So are you going to reinstate these bans or not? So what we have done in the Northern Territory, as well as a vast number of measures and alcohol policies, is we have put in place short-term restrictions for three months. Mm. They have, over the last couple of days, proven to be effective, but we acknowledge we need to work collaboratively the with the Commonwealth with Government. That, Chief Minister? Yeah, so we have seen our police data. We had dry days Monday and Tuesday for takeaway alcohol in Alice Springs. You could drink on premise because there is other mechanisms to support safe drinking. We are talking about a legal product here, uh, but we have seen a decrease in data for those couple of days, but that's not a long-term solution. We need to address the issues. When you say decrease in uh, data, issues. what decrease in data when it comes to drinking or violence or crime, what is it? So we saw Monday and Tuesday talking to the Northern Territory Police Commissioner a decrease in police call-outs, a decrease in domestic violence notifications, but we acknowledge that the short-term supply measures in Alice Springs are that for three months on top of the other policies and legislation that's in place and we need to work across government uh, and with communities around longer-term measures. So that's worked in a short-term way. We're reporting this morning that Darrell Anderson has said that alcohol bans need to be reinstated. Is that what you're going to do? And what I'm saying is I'm not preempting the contents of that report. I will pay it the respect. I'm meeting the Prime Minister in a few hours and we will discuss it and work collaboratively uh, on the recommendations, uh, plural, in that report. But you can do this. Why do you need the Prime Minister? So there is recommendations, plural. This is a multifactorial issue. We acknowledge harm, but we also acknowledge that we need to address the underlying circumstances that we see uh, around these issues, not just in Central Australia, but across the Northern Territory in Australia, and that's what we're committed to doing. So the alcohol bans, if they do go in place, are extended beyond these interim measures that you've put in. Will they just apply to the Ellis, or will they apply to more areas in Central Australia, like Catherine and Tennant Creek? So in the Northern Territory, we have a range of alcohol policies. There's some that are in place across the Northern Territory and then there's some that are based on location and tailored to that local community. Mm. OK. So these alcohol bans, even the ones that you've put in place, these interim measures, restrictions, let's call them, do you recognise, as uncomfortable it may be for you, that these are race-based policies? So we saw the intervention and that disempowered Aboriginal people in the Northern Territory greatly and there is a significant um, continuation of that. We've put in place local decision making where we work with communities to hear their voices and we need to continue that not only in the space of alcohol policy but across government. OK, you say they need to hear your voices. You were there uh, last week. You floated this idea of coming up with a ballot. Are you still going to do that? So we have seen, uh, and it's important to acknowledge that the previous coalition government walked away from stronger futures. We put in place the opt-in mechanism. We no, have I'm had communities you about that have the opted ballot. in. I'm asking you about the ballot. This was something new yes, that you Yes, and I'm floated. answering that. So we have had communities that have opted in. We've also had communities say to us, we don't want to opt in, and people are questioning um, the verity, you know, that uh, who we spoke to. And so the idea of a ballot would be to make sure that all voices of the community are heard and that the matter is settled once and for all. We are talking about a legal product, absolutely acknowledge the harm that it causes, yeah. but we're not having anyone question us about the people that have opted in to continuing uh, to be a dry community. We're only having these conversations around communities that have opted out, and that's been their choice. OK. I'm asking you about the ballot that you floated. Are you still going to go ahead with that? Because you wanted the Australian Electoral Commission involved here. When you floated this idea, uh, one part of my question is, are you still going to go ahead with it? And when you came up with this idea, was it the women that suggested this is what you should do? So... 
I suggested the idea, because it comes to the point that I was just raising, we have some situations where people have opted in, no one's questioning that. The communities that have chosen to not continue with this legislation, everyone's questioning who did we speak to. So how can you recognise every voice in that community? And I think a ballot through the Northern Territory Electoral Commission uh, is a possibility, but we need to talk to communities around how they develop their alcohol management plan and then how we can verify that across the whole community. So you're still going ahead with that, because my understanding is that uh, your caucus didn't exactly love that idea. So, as I've said to you at the outset of this conversation, we've received the report. We will be discussing that report in full with the Prime Minister uh, and we'll be making that report public. There is recommendations, plural. Alcohol is one part of this, but there is a number of other factors uh, yeah. that drive these issues. So, the ballot's got nothing to do with the report, though. This is something that you came up with. So, are you now saying if the report doesn't recommend that, you're not going to do it? So I think it's important for your viewers to understand alcohol management plans are developed by communities and we see that across the Northern Territory. How do you then make sure that that alcohol management plan is reflective of the whole community, yeah. not just perhaps leadership? So do and that's you where think a ballot, a ballot is play. still required to find out whether that is reflective of the community? Yes or no? So one idea has been for a ballot on those alcohol management plans and I'm very open to that. OK. All right. So you're not giving us um, too much information as in terms of what you're going to do in terms of the, the report, what it recommends and whether there is going to be an alcohol ban. Uh, you did blame the previous federal government um, for the Stronger Futures legislation expiring and also not putting in these alcohol management plans. I put it to you, was it not the understanding that you as the Territory Government would extend the alcohol bans under the NT Liquor Act? Was that not the understanding at the time? So Stronger Futures said alcohol management plans should be developed. Those alcohol management plans were developed and they sat on Commonwealth Minister's desk. We could not enact them. We required sign-off by the Commonwealth Government and they did not do that. But OK, so you're saying it sat on the Minister's desk? Fair enough. But why didn't you pick up these plans before you turned the tap back on, essentially? So we did not have that ability. It was the Commonwealth Government that needed to sign off on those alcohol management plans okay. and they did not do so. We had numerous um, numbers of them sitting down here in Canberra uh, that turned their back on the thoughts of local community in the Northern Territory. Okay. okay, on the one hand, though, you blame the Feds. On the other, you've rejected just in the last week any kind of intervention. So the intervention in the Northern Territory disempowered Aboriginal people and we have done an enormous amount of work around local decision making and it proves to be successful. And so we need the Commonwealth because the Northern Territory is a small jurisdiction. We have a small base of own source revenue. We need to yeah. see investment to overcome the challenges. But in terms of communities, we need to make sure that their voice is being heard. OK. Early last year, when the government, when uh, Gunner was Chief Minister, he took to Cabinet a report from the Department of Chief Minister which recommended the alcohol bans be kept in place for two years while alcohol management plans were developed and implemented. Cabinet rejected that advice and lifted the ban on the 17th of July. Is that true? No, that's not true. So the Commonwealth legislation ceased. We were aware that the Commonwealth were not going to continue their legislation and we provided legislation that allowed that opt-in and that passed the Northern Territory Parliament. Okay. We have had a number of communities that have opted in, but some communities won't opt in. And this is where we need to make sure that we have those alcohol management plans, that people understand in community those plans and then that the broader community respects the decisions that are made locally. OK, but this report went to Cabinet. You were in Cabinet. You were the Minister for Alcohol Policy. I'm told, told you voted against that. So what I'm telling you is that we did something. We enacted legislation and that legislation passed the Northern Territory Parliament and that allows for a community to remain dry whilst their alcohol management plan can be approved. But this is an issue that the Commonwealth walked away from uh, last year and we provided uh, a safety net of legislation. You didn't, and because we're here in, in this territory. situation. You, we're in this situation now. What kind of safety net was that? So with the greatest respect, it shows a lack of understanding. The Northern Territory Government provided legislation. Communities can opt in and be dry uh, and they had till January 31st to do that. We saw a number of communities do that. 
Mm. We also had communities that said, no, we don't want a race-based law to continue. We want to be able to manage alcohol. There is a range of other mechanisms that alcohol is managed in the Northern Territory. And so that is, uh, for your viewers, the situation factually. OK. When it comes down to it, we're in the situation that we're in now. Uh, Governments, your government, the federal government is scrambling to come up with uh, some kind of solution, but there's no admission on your part that you got it wrong at all. You've been Chief Minister because since we, May. We provided legislation that allows for a community to be dry. I think it's really important for your viewers to understand we have around 400 communities, remote living areas, a number of them reverted back to previous Territory Government legislation, a number opted in to continue to be dry, but a number of them said no, we're sick of people, well, Chief Minister, uh, it we hasn't want to worked. be able to access it, a legal it product. It hasn't worked and you are the Chief Minister. Doesn't it stop with you? So in terms of alcohol policy in the Northern Territory, we have a number of measures to stop the supply. And this is a legal they product. They have not yes, worked. Yes, it causes they harm. They have not worked. This is why we're... That's why you're in Canberra today, is it not? So what I'm trying to explain to your viewers is it is a complex issue because it is a legal product. And we must make sure that any uh, legislation policies we put in place are not race-based. This is race-based. So the legislation whether it, whether that we've it, put in... It, it's uncomfortable, but essentially it is directed to a large section of the community, and that is Aboriginal town camps. So the wide range of measures that are in place in the Northern Territory are every Territorian. I have to show my licence when I buy takeaway alcohol because we have a banned drinker register. That is not a race-based policy. What Stronger Futures was was a race-based policy because it said purely based on your address that you could not buy takeaway alcohol and that was the places where Aboriginal people lived. So stepping forward, we provided the ability if a community wanted to remain dry, a community living area, uh, a town camp, uh, a remote community, they could opt into that. But a number of them have said we don't want to opt in. We want to manage alcohol because it is a legal product in other ways that is across the population. So this is the contentious issue that grog is, uh, particularly noting the harm that it can cause. OK, um, so it does sound like you're going to go down uh, the path of, of alcohol bans. This report does say that. Why would you go against... You've asked Earl Anderson to conduct this report in a week for emergency measures. If she recommends alcohol bans in Aboriginal town camps, what is your justification for going against that? So we acted immediately. We put in place those short-term measures. We have received that report. Uh, we have provided that to the Commonwealth. I'm looking forward to a collaborative discussion with the Prime Minister later today. That report will be made public following in, that. In what circumstances would you go against Darrell Anderson's recommendations? So in terms of alcohol policy, no government has done more to put in place measures to allow for a legal product to be accessed, but to provide safety to the community. And that uh, is how I am stepping this forward as Chief Minister. OK, so if you say no one has done more, why are we seeing the situation in our springs then? It doesn't make sense, so the Chief Minister. It does not make sense at all. So the situation in Alice Springs, and I've heard loud and clear from the residents of Alice Springs, alcohol is one part of it, but it is also about disadvantage. It is about um, a lack of resources in remote communities and people having urban drift. It is multifactorial and complex. Mm. But in terms of alcohol, we have some of the strictest measures in Australia and the world, in fact, to stop the supply to those people that cause harm. In the end, Labor has been in power in the Northern Territory since 2016. You've been Chief Minister in May, uh, since May of this year. Why should you stay in your position when this has been the disaster that it has been and escalated in the last couple of months, if not the last couple of years? So in terms of alcohol, we've put in place responses. We have to continue to be agile with those. We have a floor price. There's a minimum standard in which people can buy the price in which they can buy alcohol in the Territory. So we continue to work across the Territory in different communities responding to the needs that they have. And we have done a significant amount of work and we'll continue to do so. But why should you remain there? Are you going to fix this? As what I... is your commitment? I don't want just, you know, lines, we've done more, this has been great. It hasn't been great. What are you going to fix? I think it's... 
I think it's really easy to sit on the East Coast and not fully understand the complexities of these issues. No, and so what I'm enough. telling your and no viewers... Government, and, and Natasha Files, no government in the last couple of decades has been able to solve this, but there have been periods where things have improved. Do you have any big ideas? Is this your number one priority? What are you going to do? Addressing the social challenges in the Northern Territory is our absolute priority and we have got success and we need to celebrate that success. But what I acknowledge is right now in Central Australia, and it is more than just alcohol, listening to the community, we need to make sure that we see that investment and that we drive it into the programs that we know won't just sugarcoat this and make it go away for a few months. We need to address these issues into the future and that's what I aim to achieve. I really appreciate your time this morning. Thanks so much. Let us know how the meeting goes with the Prime Minister. Take care.